So we are going to do the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x over x minus the square root of x over 4 minus x dx. And since it's such a good time, we are going to do it two different ways to get a better understanding of the methods that we can use to approach these kinds of integrals. Now when we see situations like this, the first thing to notice is that there is a ton of symmetry. This second expression is the reciprocal of the first expression here. And it also looks like this second expression is what we would get if we substituted u equals 4 minus x into the first expression. Then we would have x equals 4 minus u, and these two parts would flip. So if you've done some calculus competition problems before, you might think first to try doing this reflection argument to try and see whether this integral equals 0. Unfortunately, though, that doesn't work in this case because the bounds go from 0 to 2. So that reflection is not going to help us out because the bounds are going to end up being different. So we'll need some kind of other strategy. Now, it's still very, very suspicious that these two parts are the reciprocals of each other. And if we're looking at finding the integral of a function, one of the things we might think about is what happens when we differentiate it. If we take the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x, for example, the result that we get is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Notice how this square root has moved from the numerator to the denominator. And similarly, if we take the integral of 1 over the square root of x dx, if we want to use the power rule on this, we can write it as the integral of x to the negative 1 half power and then we'll have x to the 1 half over 1 half, or in other words, 2 times the square root of x. So notice, if we have a square root in the numerator and we differentiate it, it goes to the bottom. And if we integrate a square root in the bottom, it goes to the numerator. So from here, if we're looking at integrating one part of our expression and differentiating the other part, that sounds like we might want to try integration by parts. So let's see if we can do integration by parts on one of these terms to transform it and make it look more like the other term. So let's try and do integration by parts on this first part specifically, the square root of 4 minus x over x. In that case, we want to differentiate the part on the top so it goes to the bottom. So we're going to differentiate the square root of 4 minus x, and then we'll integrate the remaining part 1 over the square root of x. So if we have our plus minus here, Differentiating the square root of 4 minus x will give us negative 1 over 2 times the square root of 4 minus x. And we just integrated 1 over square root of x a second ago. That's going to give us 2 times the square root of x. So we are going to put these two parts together. First, this is going to equal the square root of 4 minus x times 2 square root of x. That's evaluated at 2 and 0. And then we'll have to subtract off this second part. Notice we have a minus minus, which will give us a plus, the integral from 0 to 2 of these two parts multiplied together. Notice the 2 and 2 on the top and bottom will cancel, and we get the square root of x over the square root of 4 minus x. Then we're going to have to subtract that exact same thing inside of the integral. So on the inside of our final integral expression here, we have a function minus itself. This is going to equal 0, so that part cancels out. Our integration by parts let us flip those two. Since the 2's canceled out, this is all we get as our result. So the final answer is whatever this expression right here evaluates to. First, we're going to have 2 times the square root of 4 minus 2. That's the square root of 2. And then times the square root of 2 again. If we plug in 0, the square root of 0 is just going to give us 0 back, so we don't have to worry about this part. And finally, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So our final answer is 4. So we got here by noticing the symmetry between these two expressions and realizing, since we're looking at integrals, the derivative of a square root brings it to the bottom just like we need. So therefore, we can use integration by parts to put these two expressions together and make them cancel out to get us our easy final answer. 
So now it's time to get started on the second method for solving this integral. Again, we notice the symmetry like we said before, but one of the other things that we can do in an instance of symmetry is try to put the two expressions together from the beginning. Remember that we can think about this as the integral from 0 to 2 of when we split up the square roots on the top and bottom, we get the square root of 4 minus x over the square root of x minus the square root of x over the square root of 4 minus x. And this is a situation where on the bottom we have two different things in the denominator. So if we want to put the expressions together, maybe take advantage of the symmetry, we want to get them under a common denominator. So in that case, we can multiply the left part by the square root of 4 minus x, square root of 4 minus x, and we multiply the right part by square root of x and square root of x on the top and bottom. Now these denominators are both the same, so let's see what we get as our result. The integral from 0 to 2 of, our denominator is going to be root x root 4 minus x in both cases, but on the top, notice, these two square roots are exactly the same, so the square root squared gives us the original function, 4 minus x, and same thing right here, we're going to have minus another x, dx. Now from here, let's do a little simplification. We have the integral from 0 to 2. On the top, 4 minus x minus x is 4 minus 2x, and since we're only working with one expression now, let's put these two square roots on the bottom together. We have the square root of 4x minus x squared dx. And now we're in a very, very nice situation because the inside of this square root here, if we let u equal 4x minus x squared, our du is exactly what we have on the top, 4 minus 2x dx. And so we can write this as the integral from Let's see, 4 times 0 minus 0 squared, that looks like it's still 0. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2 squared is 4, 8 minus 4 is 4. So we have on the top is just a du over the square root of u. And just like we said at the very beginning of the video, this is going to evaluate to 2 times the square root of u, evaluated at 4 and 0. Square root of 0 is 0, square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So we got here by realizing that one of the ways to take advantage of symmetry is putting the two expressions together in a way that lets us manipulate them at the same time. And because of the symmetry that we were seeing here, these two square roots on the top ended up multiplying together to just give us a nice expression that ended up letting us use a simple u substitution to get to our answer. So that was two different ways of solving the initial problem that we were looking at here, but there are actually a few other ways to solve it as well. For example, we could do trig substitution by doing something like letting x equal 4 times sine squared of u. And I actually did something similar when I did the integral of the square root of 1 minus 1 over x a long time ago. You can find it in the integrals playlist. But if you have any other interesting ideas for ways to evaluate these integrals, you can leave them in the comments so that other people can learn about these cool new integration techniques as well.